Hi there, my name is Julia Eagles and I'm going to talk to you today about data visualization. So who am I? I'm a student in the Master of Public Policy program at the Humphrey School. I work with the City of Minneapolis Sustainability Office, which is some of the data examples I'll be sharing with you today are from there. And I love data. I'm also a new aunt and so I also love new babies. <laughs> um, in terms of what data visualization is and how it can be valuable, Data visualization is com combining a message related to numerical information or quantitative data with an image, so a way to sort of represent that visually. And pe they say that people tend to remember 65% of the things that they see and hear versus only 10% of the information that they only hear. So there can be real value to adding some visuals to get across the information you have related to data. So we've all seen examples of bad data visualization. There are the pie charts that don't make any sense because they don't add up to 100%. Some weird 3D graphics included that, that just sort of make for a more confusing presentation. Data that's, there are graphics that really have way too much information going on so you can't understand them. And then this new trend toward data visualization that can get a little busy and confusing in terms of how it's using data and I'll talk more about that. So I'm going to go through some general rules for how to do good data visualization. So the first thing to do is really ask yourself, what's your message? What information are you trying to get across? And then think about whether or not you need a graph or a chart for that, and if so, what would it be? So I'm going to talk through some options of choosing the right chart. There's all kinds of different charts that you can make depending on what kind of information you're trying to get across, and I'll go through just a few common, common examples. So one is just a table. It doesn't, it's pretty simple, it doesn't require a lot of flashy design, but tables can be really useful for making, for getting really precise information and making direct comparisons between numbers. So in this case, if you wanted to see the number of trees planted in 2008, you can use a table to give that information specifically. And then there are graphs. So there's a few different types of graphs that I'll talk about, and there are five sort of main types of comparison that graphs are good for visualizing. So one is time series, showing how information trends change over time. One is ranking, so you can show uh, highest to lowest or compare uh, rankings or outcomes for different information. Another is part to whole, so how things break down in terms of a percentage. And then deviations and distribution, so looking at trends across data in terms of those two things. So line graphs and bar graphs, columns or bar charts are a couple I'm going to talk about. These give you a chance to really um, look at specific information, distinct pieces of data compared to one another. So this shows that same data that I showed in the table before as a column chart. And so this way you can see from year to year how it changed the number of trees that were planted versus the number of trees that were lost. A bar chart is another way to do that, and this shows you how you can use a ranking uh, the ranking feature on a bar chart, so to show among Minneapolis lakes which ranked highest to lowest in terms of a specific lake aesthetic index that the city has developed. And then there's a line chart, so this is really good for showing trends over time. This shows the percentage of bicycle commuters in Minneapolis and how that has changed from year to year. So I'm going to make a case against using pie charts. Pie charts tend to be a default when people are doing data visualization, but they can get really busy. So it can be hard for our brains to sort of dis delineate the percentages within a pie chart. In this case, I've labeled it for you, which helps, but otherwise you wouldn't necessarily know that this is 27% and this section is 21%. So a better way to show that information is in a bar chart or a column chart. Here I've got that same information ranked and you can really tell electricity consumption is the biggest piece of greenhouse gas emissions in the city and wastewater really makes up a small percentage. So try some other options rather than going before going to the default of a pie chart when you want to do a part to whole comparison. And then there's this idea of data to ink ratio. So when you're designing a chart you really want to make sure that the, the ink that you include, you know, the visualization you include is really the most powerful it can be. So on this top chart you can see we've got a lot of extra lines and points along the axes that kind of make it distracting. We're also using three different bars to get across the information. On this bottom one we've taken away all those extra lines, we've done fewer different axes points, and we've combined those bars into one so that you can really just compare 
simply across the different charts or the different information. Next is avoid special effects. So Excel makes it really easy to do some funny things with 3D effects and different types of charts, and I would just avoid those. It makes the information too confusing. Keep it simple. But think about ways that you can use color, size, and position to say what's a, to show the most important piece in your chart. So in this case, we've got the target for the number of rain gardens in the city is uh, in red and set off into the future for when that target year is. So this really helps draw your eye to that piece of information from this chart. And then just a couple examples of other ways to visualize data. One is through maps. This can be really useful, useful for geospatial information. And there's a new trend sort of towards infographics, and that's just using different images to show that same data information. And I'd say these, these can be a really great tool, but keep those same rules in mind in terms of keeping it simple and keeping one message when you're designing an infographic. And that is what I've got for you. Thank you.